I met a man named Oscar Ostrov, who had been a Chicago presenter, theater presenter, and was now out here in Los Angeles. So when these people came from New York or wherever they came from, the Yiddish theater stars, they contacted Ostrov, and he would help them get set up with a production here. So he next contacted me and called me because Marie Schwartz was coming to town to do some theater here. Whoa, that was a name to reckon with in the Yiddish theater. The founder of the Yiddish Art Theater, the Yiddish Quince Theater in New York. I went to meet him. He was doing Schwartz's Anid in English, Hard to Be a Jew, a Shalom Aleichem comedy, and which he had done very successfully in New York. And the role that was open was a role that had originally been played by Muni Weisenfreund. Paul Muni had done the role with Schwartz in New York in the Yiddish Theater. So I was excited. Theater was on La Cienega Boulevard, and I went to see him by appointment. And I came into the theater on an afternoon, and there was something going on on stage, and he was standing, I recognized him, he was standing in, in the aisle with his wife. She turned to Schwartz and she said, I kicked those with a guy in Schwartz's on Eid. They didn't know I spoke Yiddish. So I thought, oh, this is great. I think I'm going to get a job. <laughs> so I got the job. And uh, I had to bleach my hair because I was playing a, a blonde goy, a blonde Gentile, who makes a bet with a, his Jewish friend. The Jewish friend says, it's tough being a Jew. And the guy says, no, nah, what's so tough about it? So he says, well, you try it. You know? So I become the, the, um, the goy who's posing as a Jew to see what it feels like to be a, in, in a Jewish community. And we ran for 16 weeks, which was a long run in Los Angeles. I admired him greatly. He was a wonderful theater man. He could create magic. He was brave on stage. He was big. He was bold. He was theatrical. Everything about him was theatrical. He was one of those old theater actor managers who really knew how to deliver the goods. You know? And given an opportunity on stage, he would get hold of it and chew it. You know? <laughs> So I learned bravura acting from him. <laughs> he was a very smart man, very dedicated to, to the Yiddish. He wrote articles frequently for the Forbes and other, other Yiddish publications. He wrote a letter in Yiddish to my parents who were very worried about me at the time because I wasn't, I wasn't exactly tearing up Hollywood. You know. He wrote to them and said that he wanted to be my theatrical father and that I, and I was doing okay, I was a nice kid and I was responsible and, and it, everything would be all right. And they cherished that contact from him because they knew, of course, who he was and his reputation. At the same time, there was a sense of um, a kind of a tragic quality about what was happening with him because the Yiddish audience was diminishing. The audience that came to our theater every night was all gray-haired Yiddishists and he would lament the fact that he would watch the cars pull up outside the theater, the young people sitting in the front seats and the parents in the back seats. The parents would get up and come into the theater and the young people would drive away. And they'd come back and pick up the parents after the show. They would not come to see him. He was destined to move from city to city to find his Yiddish audience that was still there and do some performances and make a living. But the glory days of the Yiddish theater were over. <laughs>